A new landmark moment in the migrant crisis. There are now more migrants living in city shelters in New York City than there are homeless people. Joining us this morning to discuss is former acting commissioner of Customs and Border Protection and visiting fellow at FAIR and the Heritage Foundation, Mark Morgan. Good morning to you, sir. Always great to see you. So they hit that number this past weekend. 50,000 migrants now living in local city shelters compared to 49,700 homeless people. And Mark, what's really troubling about this is that this is not the number of migrants who've actually arrived in this city this past year. That number is around 80,000, meaning 30,000 have been transported to other cities and states. How much is this costing and how much longer will New York City be able to, to deal with this? Yeah, both good questions, Jan. Look, and here we go again. We hit, hit yet another historic landmark and not a good one under this administration. <clears throat> and Jan, we talked about this before. Uh, keep in mind, I think for people listening, remember, New York is probably one of the richest cities on the face of the planet. And with 80,000 in their shelters, they're, they're screaming uncle and they're overwhelmed. Let's keep in mind the last 28 months, we've seen over 7.7 .7 million total encounters in Godaways under this administration. So 80,000 compared to millions is really just a drop in the bucket. And let's keep in mind, it's not just about New York, although they get most attention. It's not just about illegal aliens in shelters. We know that they're being pushed to, to sponsors. They're living with friends and families. And many of them, we have no idea where they are in the United States, let alone who they are. This is simply unsustainable, and it's costing U.S. taxpayers billions of dollars. It also shows the mayor's hypocrisy here when he was upset about so many migrants being bused into his city. Now we know at least 30,000 have been bused out of his city. Oh. Republican Representative Andrew Garabino, though, from Long Island, introduced new legislation to protect unaccompanied minors at the border from trafficking. Tell us about the importance of this act and what it does to keep these children safe. Well, look, I applaud his efforts, but let's keep in mind, Jane, the truth is the only way to really prevent trafficking from happening is to secure our border and de-incentivize uh, illegal immigration from happening. Look, as long as the United States releases unaccompanied minors in the United States who've entered illegally, the cartels will continue to exploit that. They're going to continue to smuggle the unaccompanied minors and then thrust them into a life of trafficking uh, afterwards. Again, I applaud his effort, but this is, this is a reactive bill after the crime has happened or is well underway. And let's keep in mind, Secretary Mayorkas, He's already shown that, that, that congressionally passed laws are nothing but, but mere advisory opinions to him. He's not enforcing the laws now that can protect unaccompanied minors. What makes us think that he's actually going to enforce a law then, that a new law that has passed? What we need to do, what Congress should be focusing on, is impeaching Secretary Mayorkas. Mark, FAIR just released a report estimating the number of illegal immigrants in the U.S. Tell me more about these numbers in this report. Yeah, it's a really extensive analysis done, and the crux of it was based on U United States Census data. And they estimated that the number of illegal aliens in this country right now currently is well over 16.8 million. Now, I, I personally think that number is low, but, I, I, but, but I'll, I'll tell you, I think this data is right uh, that they used. And, and the, I, I think we can really stick to 16.8 million is at least the low number and it's a righteous number. And they also, part of the analysis, they said that right now it's costing UX taxpayers net cost is almost $170 billion. And they expect at the end of the Biden's first term, that cost to UX taxpayers is going to be around $200 billion. Florida governor and 2024 presidential candidate Ron DeSantis did formally unveil his border security plan yesterday in Eagle Pass, Texas. I don't know if you, you saw it or not, but uh, one of the things he says, he's going to finish building the border wall. He has a, a couple of other uh, items on here. I wanted to get your thoughts on some of the some of the things he, he plans to do if he were elected president. Yeah, Jen, look, I think everything he rolled out was spot on. There's two very important things. Part of his plan was the multi-layer strategy that applied deterrence consequences and integrity back in the system, as well as then uh, applying a multi-layer strategy of not just policy, but also tools and resources. Look, that's the same strategy that we applied under the Trump administration. It worked and it was effective. So I actually applaud Governor DeSantis that he actually is looking at something that was done and was successful. And he's saying, hey, look, I'm going to do the exact same thing that's already been proven to be successful. I think what he laid out was spot on. Former Acting Commissioner of Customs and Border Protection and Visiting Fellow at FAIR and the Heritage Foundation, Mark Morgan. Great seeing you as always. Have a great week. Thanks for joining us. You too. Thanks.